Welcome to this video on how to format an APA paper in Word. The easiest way to do this is to use the APA template that Word provides. And when you open Word, you can click on New and type in APA style paper or APA paper. The one that I like the most is the APA style paper. So that's the one that I suggest you use. Once you click on it, it will open up this pop-up box, click on Create, and it'll download it to your computer. Now what this gives you is a whole, the whole layout for the paper. I'm going to make this a little smaller, it'll be blurry, but the point is I want you to see how the whole paper is laid out. You can see there's a title page and there's a header up here. It's different on this page than it is on that page, and that's one of the things that makes it really nice to use this template because all you have to do is fill in your information. After your title page, you'll have an abstract. Not all teachers require this. If it is required, it's basically a summary of your paper. So you write your paper and then come back in and write your abstract. Below the abstract are keywords. There you'd list any major keywords, the topics, subtopics, what does your paper have to do with. If your teacher does not require an abstract, then you'd simply delete this and move the first page of your paper over here. After your abstract, or if you're not required to have one, you'll have your paper. You'll notice here we'll have the title of the paper, and then the paper begins. There's no extra space. This title is not larger. It's not in a different font, anything like that. So if you're changing font size, things like that, then you're doing too much work. It's APA. It's plain. What should show up is not your font size, but your words and your ideas. Um, you do not have a heading with your introduction, as the APA book says, and I paraphrase here, but not by far, duh, it's an introduction. You may have headings and subheadings in your paper, and this template illustrates what they should look like. You wouldn't say heading one, it would just be whatever the heading is. For our practice, we're going to title this paper, Spiffy Paper. I know it's not that imaginative, but it works or spiffy title. Um, so if we were writing a paper about spiffy titles, we might have a short history of titles in essays. We might have a second main section that was called what makes a bad title. And then we might have a third section um, that's still the main heading called what makes a spiffy title. Um, and then under each of those, we might have separate headings. Now, in general, if your paper's not over about three pages, you probably don't have a need for headings. So they're kind of more work, and if your paper's really short, I suggest you don't use them. To use secondary, tertiary, and, and headings that go further than that, you really do want a long paper, because if you're just saying um, something that only takes up a sentence or two, then weave it in with the rest, okay? Um, in terms of of your headings. Again, this says heading one, but we wouldn't put the one, two, three, and you'll notice that this one's centered. After that, anything under that would be on the left in bold. Anything here would be um, indented in bold. This one's in bold and italics, and it goes on and on. So it shows you how to do that. If you have gone through and deleted this information, which I'll suggest you do in a minute, and you need to go back to that to be reminded, Remember, you can just click on File and New and open up another copy of the APA style paper that will have all of this instruction in there. After your paper ends, you'll have your references page and your references list the sources you've used. Now make sure that if you mentioned it in your paper, it is mentioned in your references. If it's listed in your references, it should be mentioned and cited correctly in your paper. So these two go together. Also remember that anything from the references page on does not count towards your paper length. Remember, paper length is about depth of thought, and we're only counting what's in here, not the title page, not the abstract, not the references, or anything beyond it. After your references, if you have any footnotes, you would put those in. Footnotes are, given, are there to give extra information that don't necessarily bear on what you're talking about at the moment, but may help a reader provide them um, some extra insight. However, 
Again, it's more work. So if it doesn't belong in your paper, really take time to think about why would you put it in a footnote. This also doesn't count to length. So it really needs to be something that you're like, you know, this isn't pertinent to my paper itself. It's pertinent to the topic, but this would be really helpful for readers to know. If you have any tables, they would be listed after that. And any graphics, or as APA calls them, figures, they would be listed after that. Um, do remember, however, with both tables and figures, anything you use, you will need to cite. And again, it does not count in page length. So don't provide it unless it's really important. There are times you can use tables and figures in the text of your paper, but again, they'll need to be cited in your references. They don't count to page length, and you need to make sure they're really helpful um, to your reader and not just repeating something you've put in your own words. The best option is to put it in your own words. If you can't put it in your own words and get the same effect as seeing the table, then that's a time you might think about putting the table in there. All right, so that's the basic layout of an APA paper. One of the first things I generally do with um, this is I'm going to delete and get rid of everything, even the references section here. Now, you can see that this is in, um, let me make this a little bigger, and then you can see that this, when I click on it, um, there's footnotes, okay, you can see that this is in a, um, a box. And so this is linked to a, the Microsoft Word's references feature. I've never really used it. I know a number of people that do like it. I'm sure there are tons of YouTube videos out, out there about how to do it. So if you wanna give it a try, use it. It tends to annoy me because it um, puts too much control in there that I would rather have. So I generally get rid of it. And to do that, I just make the screen smaller and go and I delete everything. I leave the title and I delete everything after the title. All right, now let's take, so I've basically stripped this down. Um, let's, hold on, there's something else I didn't delete there. Okay, so I've got everything but the title. So let's go back to the, the title page and take a look at it. Now the title page has running head, colon, and then you shorten title up to 50 characters. So if you have a very long title, you would shorten it up to 50 characters. And the way you know how many characters it is, other than counting every single one, is you can highlight your title and then click, click down here on the left, in the left bottom corner of Word, where it gives you the word count. And that'll open up and it gives you um, word count, characters, paragraphs, characters with spaces. This is 51. So if this was our title, we'd want to cut it down, but we're not going to cut it down just to 50. I'm not just going to delete that S. I'm going to cut it down to something kind of logical. Um, so I might delete a word or two for sound. So keep that in mind. But this tells you, and you want the with spaces. So here, the first thing we do is it's already got the page number in here. And we're going to go in here and type in our title. And so notice it's in all caps. And as I said, we're going to title this paper Spiffy Title. Because I'm lazy, I'm going to copy this. I'll need it in a little bit. And then I'm going to come back down here. If you click once or twice, it'll put you down here in your title page. And then Spiffy, oops, turn off the caps lock. And in this case, it's only capitalizing the major words. So put your title in there. In terms of your name, no degrees, just your um, first name, last name. So my name is, well, put your name, first name, last name. You can put in your middle name if you want. Right? Institutional affiliation would be the college or university that you are attending. And then we can go down here to the author note. Now, if you were submitting for publication, you would include grant funding information, that kind of thing. When you're submitting for class, then um, you just put this paper was prepared for English 1301. You put the title of your class, the section here at El Paso Community College. We don't call them sections, we call them CRNs. And this is so that the teacher, if they get messed up, they all stay in the same place. And then taught 
by Professor, what, the name of your professor. Please make sure to double check and spell your professor's name correctly. This is the first page they see, so it is your first impression. And while hopefully many people aren't, you know, overly annoyed by that, you want to make a good impression. Now you'll notice in this, um, in this template, it does have the author note up here. In most cases, I've seen. Um, in most cases, I've seen in terms of college samples, this is centered a little more. And then this, the author note is moved down. I move down till it wraps onto the next page and then back, backspace. Then we move on to the second page. Now, remember I said there's a different header. Notice this one, running head, that's in lowercase, spiffy title. We have page one here, shortened title, page two. So all we've got to do is go in there and type in your title. And since I copied, I can paste. Um, again, not all professors are going to require you to have an abstract. If they do, just leave this here and move on to writing your paper. Then once you're done, come in here, type up a short paragraph, 100 to 250 to 200 words, um, what your paper's about, and then keywords, any kind of major topics, um, subtopics, issues that are covered in your paper. Um, I'm going to skip this for now. But if you do require, like I said, go ahead and write your paper, and then once you're done, come back and do that. Um, so, all right, title. Oops, biffy title. No, I didn't want it all in caps. You can change case by clicking on the uppercase and lowercase um, A up here. And I just want to capitalize each word. Now, I have got to bring this back. Oh, then I'm going to type in my paper. So tab to start your paragraphs. Fabulous, fabulous. Let me see. There we go. This put in, this automatically puts in a tab. So um, make sure that it's not double tabbed. And there we go. Fine paragraphs. Write your paper, write your paper, write your paper. One of the things that um, I often do as I'm writing my papers I would always, once I use a source, let's say, for example, I use a source in here. Um, when I use a source, what I would do is I would stop. And if you have deleted your references page, you'll notice there's no extra page. Now, I want all my references to be on a separate page from the last page of my paper. So I can press Control-Enter, or I can insert a page break. This makes sure this page is always on its own, so it will never... When I'm writing, um, it won't bleed over into the next page. You'll notice that, whoops, oh, I didn't know what happened there. Um, it won't bleed over into the next page. I think I'm still getting my screenshots, but it will always leave this as a separate page. So once I use a reference, one of the things I'll do is go back and now remember this is going to be centered. References. I'm going to enter. No extra spaces. Move back to the left. Okay. And then I can type in my um, reference. And you can use um, you can use things like um, EasyBib or any of the citation generators. Or like I said, the word references um, function. Whatever works for you, just make sure you double check with a with your textbook or a good citation style guide to make sure you get it right. Because if you use an electronic source citation generator and it's wrong, you get the grade and not your not the not the internet. So as I'm typing along, if I use a reference, I generally go in and just put it in. And then if I um, if I have another one and it's alphabetically before or after. the ones I've put in, I'll go ahead and put them in an alphabetical order. Now remember that you also need to, when you do your citations, you also need to um, set them up as a hanging indent. So in order to do that, it's easy. Just type them in. Make sure you don't enter um, any place until you're done with the citation. And then you highlight them all 
you can click on paragraph here and get the call out box or you can right click and click on paragraph and get the call out box. What we're looking for is hanging under special hanging. Okay. We'll say okay and notice how it scoots it over. That way the last name, whatever the citation begins with, starts, hangs out, and you can find them easier. So if you're reading a paper and there's a citation for someone whose last name is last name, then it's easier, especially once you get pages and pages of references, to go through and find these alphabetically. Um, so that's really the basics to formatting your APA paper. Remember that using the template is um, nice because it deals with these running headers. It's already got things set up for you so that um, it's already got things set up for you so that you have the look and the feel that you want. Um, and one of the things that I highly advise is that once you finish your paper, take a moment and do some visual proofreading. Make it smaller. Use the zoom bar at the bottom right hand side and do what I did where you can see um, where your paragraphs are. You know, make sure that those indents aren't double indents. Um, make sure that you've got that hanging indent. Make sure you've got references. Make sure you don't have any bold or anything wherever you um, don't want it. So if you're not doing any headings, then those that bold shouldn't be there. It's not only important to read your words, but also what it looks like, because especially with academic papers, your first, your first impression is always visual. But with academic papers, your teachers are used to seeing what it looks like. That's what they expect. And when you give them that look, then that makes all the difference in the world. So I hope this has helped you format your APA paper.